Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Cognitive AI Tech Update. So excited to have you on here. Our last quarter at Cognitive ended on a high note as we successfully closed our Series C funding. And needless to say, much of this investment will focus on developing even better products and services for you, our value customers, partners, and users. But for today's tech update, we will again look back at our product highlights from the past quarter, and I guarantee you won't be disappointed. As usual, a few housekeeping items to keep in mind. You are listen-only mode for the whole session. However, feel free to drop any questions or feedback in the Q&A panel, and we will get back to you either today or within the next days. A link to the webinar recording will also land right into your inbox shortly after the webinar. So what did we work on in the past quarter? Over the last seven releases, we introduced 79 platform updates covering 18 new features and 61 other improvements. As you can see, Q2's focus was on Asian augmentation features, Gen AI and Knowledge AI, our brand new Cognitive Web Chat, as well as Voice. So you know what's coming. These will also be our key topics in this webinar. First, Johanna, Product Manager at Cognitive, will give you a quick tour of the latest version of Cognitive Web Chat. Those who joined or watched our last tech update already got a preview of WebChat v3, and since late May, it has been officially released in beta, marking feature parity while introducing multiple other enhancements in terms of user experience. Plus, Johanna will also have a bonus update for you. Thank you, Nu. And hi, everyone. I'm Joanna, a product manager and product designer here at Cognity, and I'm taking care of the Cognity AI main tool as well as the Insights product. And I'm here to share some exciting new things with you. I do have some cool changes for WebChat V3 to share, as well as some parts of our new Cognity AI redesign. As you can already see, there are some new colors around here, much brighter than before. And you might know this color scheme from our Cognitive Insights tool, where we've switched to this a couple of months ago. We also implemented a few overall UI UX changes and improvements in our Cognitive Insights tool a few months ago. And we are now looking to step-by-step -step also improve some UI UX elements in our Cognitive AI main tool. On the other hand, with WebChat V3, the most exciting news are that we are now officially in our beta. Previously, we were in a preview state, but now with our official beta, that also marks feature parity between WebChat V2 and WebChat V3. There are some cool things that I can share with you. So for example, we do now have the ability to enable speech to text. Then opening up our demo web chat here, we can click on this little microphone icon down here and say, hello, I'm Joanna. It's nice to meet you. And click send. This text to this speech to text feature is something new that I'm very excited to share. And another really cool new thing is our native X app overlay feature. So what you can see here, this little button, that is what opens the X app natively in the web chat. In this case, we have this um, payment uh, overview where the customer can add their payment details and then click submit. And after they have finished their action, after they've clicked submit, they go straight back to, to our web chat V3. This allows for quicker, more seamless, and also way smoother user experience. On another hand, we also have our quick replies. You can scroll through your endpoint settings in WebChat V3 to chat options. There you will find quick replies. These quick replies um, can be enabled through this toggle, and you can set a title for the section in which they will appear for the user. Then you can just set different quick replies here in title and post back value, for example. Now, when you've confirmed this, the user will find the chat options 
with the three dotted menu. So here we see our section title and we also see the quick replies that we set earlier, which can be posted in the chat. On another hand, we now have the teaser messages available. So again, when you scroll through the endpoint settings, you will come across the teaser messages here. You can set a text for it, and you can also decide whether it will be shown in the chat and even serve as a conversation starter, for example. Now, this is what it will look like. When we open up our web chat, it will show up as a little message next to the speech bubble here. And that is exactly how the customer will be able to have this as a little teaser, as a little prompt to interact with your chat, as you can see down here. That's all. Thank you very much. And right back to you, New. Thanks, Johanna. I really love the new look of Conchi in web chat. Coming up next, Dilek, Senior Product Manager at Conchi, will walk you through our top highlights for voice and Asian augmentation features. Dilek will demonstrate how to design hyper-realistic voice experiences by recreating contact center ambience. And she will also dive into some exciting live Asian and Asian co-pilot improvements. Over to you, Dilek. Thanks, Neil. Hi, everyone. I'm Dilek, Product Manager for Voice Gateway, Live Agent, Agent Copilot, and the integration to contact centers. Let's directly dive into Voice Gateway. As discussed last quarter, our vision for voice AI agents is to facilitate a human-like experience. And to support this vision, we have introduced two new features, atmosphere sounds and silence overlay. Both features are valid for the entire session, and both of them are configured through the set session config node. Let's begin with the atmosphere sounds. This feature allows you to enhance the conversational experience by incorporating background sounds, such as an office ambience, to simulate real life scenarios. It's basically as if your AI agent is sitting in a contact center. Within the atmosphere sound section in the set session config node, you have three options, play, silence, and remove. So you start playing the sounds, pause the sounds, or stop the sound. When selecting play, you can add the URL to your MP3 file. If the file is actually shorter than the call duration, you can enable the loop toggle to repeat the audio. Additionally, you can also adjust the volume of your MP3 file to ensure it's audible without overpowering the AI agent output. Let's quickly listen to it. Welcome to Cognigy. What is your customer number? ABC123. Thanks. I have found your account. Now, let's move on to the silence overlay. This feature, as the name already spoils, fills silent latency with sounds like natural keyboard clicks, basically signaling AI activity. It's particularly important when working with API calls that take longer, such as retrieving the order status or interacting with large language models. The silence overlay will activate whenever we are waiting for input from the backend. And for this feature, you have two options. You either play or remove. So you start playing the audio or you stop the audio. You can add your MP3 file to be played during sound latency, and you can even set a delay for when the audio should start. Um, to simulate the silent latency, I have added a sleep note into my flow. Um, so we can have a bit of silence where we would be waiting for the backend to interact back. So let's give it a call. Welcome to Cognigy. What is your customer number? ABC123. Thanks. I have found your account. Great. Now, for the last voice gateway feature, we actually need to access our voice gateway portal. Then go to the speech settings, 
because we have added support for on-prem installations for Microsoft Azure, DeepRAM, and Nuance. Um, let's use Microsoft as an example. You now have two different options to choose from, the basic configuration of hosted Azure services or the on-prem version with your own Azure Docker container. For the on-prem version, you need to add your container URL for text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and if required, your subscription key. Now, um, let's also have a look into Life Agent and explore our latest improvements. One of the newest features for Life Agent is the ability to add custom notification sounds. To access this, go to your account settings and scroll down to the notification sound section. Here you have two options. Basic, this is basically our default option, which is like that little blob sound that we have. Or you choose custom, where you can add your own sound URL. Um, please note that this setting can only be configured at an admin level. I just wanted to mention this, as we do have a few configurations that you can also adjust on an agent profile. But this is something where we have decided that the agent um, should not control, control this, but the admin should have all of the control of how the notification should sound like. In addition to the custom notification sounds, we have also enhanced the functionality for changing the conversation inbox. Sometimes it might happen that customers want to connect with a human agent as quickly as possible, and therefore may provide responses to the AI agent that make them land in the wrong inbox. If a supervisor, admin, or agent notices that a conversation is in the wrong inbox, they can go to the conversation details and change the inbox to ensure that the appropriate experts are handling the customer's query. Additionally, it's also possible to use bulk action to move more than one conversation. Then, um, last but not least, let's also discuss Agent Copilot. Um, we have added the UI preferences section to our plug and play widgets. This enhancement allows you to modify the font and image size for a better fit into your workspace, also making sure that the overall workspace design is more cohesive. One of the most significant improvements for Agent Copilot actually comes with some UI changes. By navigating to our endpoint settings and selecting a handover provider, in this case, let's go for Live Agent, um, and then going to our Copilot section, you will notice a simplified UI. For Live Agent, you can now select between two Copilot types. We have Workspace and Whisper. If you choose Whisper, you must also select a flow for it. And if you choose Workspace, you can select your Copilot flow and only if desired, a Copilot config. Because one major change that we've made um, is that the Copilot config, which was previously needed to be created via API, is no longer mandatory. So um, if you want to have a default workspace, Grid layout, you can still create a copilot config um, via API and select it in your endpoint. If you do not configure one, please ensure that your copilot flow starts with a set grid node um, to display the copilot tiles in your workspace. If not, and you don't have the um, copilot config um, that has been created via API, we will not know where to actually put your tiles within your workspace. Um, with this change, our Copilot URL has also been shortened. You now only need the Copilot base URL, session ID, user ID, and URL token. Thank you, and have fun exploring. Back to you, Nu. Awesome. Thanks, Elex. So many cool features there, but the voice demo was really impressive. Now let's get to the brain of Kanji AI. And for that, Alex, product manager at Kanji, will show you our latest NOU and Gen AI updates, including some amazing hybrid AI features. But before that, Alex will walk you through some exciting knowledge AI improvements. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Niu. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm going to tell you about the knowledge AI and generative AI improvements that we have released this quarter. Let's start with Knowledge AI. As you know, Knowledge AI allows you to easily create FAQ bots without having to create an intent model. 
All you have to do is upload your data to a knowledge store, add a single node in the flow, and you can have your bot up and running. When a user asks a question, Knowledge AI finds relevant information related to this question and then uses a large language model to generate an answer. And this scheme is very clear and very easy to understand, but making it work at scale is a real challenge. And our goal with Knowledge AI and Cognigy in general is to create a reliable and robust solution that can work at an enterprise scale and support all enterprise workflows. And in the past few months, we've invested a lot of time and brain power into increasing the availability and throughput of Knowledge AI and uh, eliminating limitations and various bottlenecks and adding new observability features. Let me show you. Now, if you go to the admin center on the user menu, you will find a new section and a new report called Knowledge AI. It keeps track of the number of questions that have been answered by Knowledge AI and shows how many chunks are in use and how many chunks are still available. A chunk is a unit of knowledge extracted from a knowledge source, and I will talk more about chunks in a minute. But the point here is that Knowledge AI is a separate product with its own license, and uh, we offer various packages of knowledge chunks and knowledge queries. And your license defines the limit on how much data can be ingested into Knowledge AI. Previously, we had soft limits on the number of knowledge stores and knowledge sources that you could create, and now these limits have been removed completely. And the only limitation is the number of chunks, which, as I said, is defined by the license key. Let's take a closer look at knowledge chunks and how they are created, because this is the other major improvement that I want to show you today. So what is a chunk? Every document that you add to Knowledge AI is a knowledge source. And a collection of knowledge sources is a knowledge store. Knowledge sources are split into chunks. When a user asks a question, Knowledge AI finds chunks that contain information related to it and uh, extracts answers from these chunks with the help of a large language model. This approach ensures that the answer comes from the data that you provided and is not internal knowledge or a hallucination of the LLM. Previously, when you uploaded a document to Knowledge AI, the chunks that it created had fixed length and didn't contain any information about the format of the text. Now we have a new advanced content extraction strategy that is used by default. It is based on OCR technologies and uses vision models to understand the layout of your document. And this allows it to split the document into logical blocks and create semantic chunks so that two chunks located next to each other don't overlap in mean. A typical chunk now looks like this. So it starts with a heading and has one or several paragraphs of text that belong exactly to this section. And notice that we now understand the difference between section headings and normal text and automatically add the respective markdown syntax. If your document or web page contains a table, for example, it will also be parsed by OCR and saved here in markdown format. So having these new semantic chunks improves the quality of answers on two levels. First, we improve the accuracy of chunk search because it is easier to find chunks that contain information related to the user's question. And when generating the answer with the large language model, this new chunk structure and the markdown format help the LLM to generate better answers. 
In addition to that, for PDF documents, the new parser also automatically adds page numbers to chunk metadata. And in this example, the chunk begins and ends on page two of this document. The advanced content parser is available in all environments that are managed by Cognitive. And in our documentation, you can find instructions on how to enable it for on-premises installations. To use it, you need to select File Advanced in uh, the drop-down menu when adding a new knowledge source. And uh, in addition to PDF text and Microsoft Word documents, we have added support for PowerPoint files. That's it for Knowledge AI. Let's move on and talk about natural language understanding and generative AI. NLU. NLU is the core piece of the Cognitive Platform. We have a state-of-the-art engine with very advanced intent recognition, slot detection, and entity extraction capabilities, and it supports over, over 100 languages. But at the same time, we now live in a world of large language models that excel at language tasks. But to use them, you have to rely on external providers. Uh, for NLU tasks, we are interested in a specific type of models called sentence embedding models. And the best language model today comes from OpenAI. It is called Text Embedding 3 Large. This model, this model is now natively integrated into the Cognigy NLU. And you can choose between local models built by Cognigy and external embedded models that can be hosted by OpenAI or Asia OpenAI. When talking about language understanding, there's always a trade-off between latency, accuracy, and cost. And Cognigy models hit a sweet spot. They are high quality, provide instant uh, intent recognition, and you don't have to pay for them. The large model from OpenAI incurs network, network latency and uh, requires payment for every user input. So when would you want to use that? Um, remember how you train the NLU. To train the NLU, you need to create an intent model and add example sentences for each intent. And we provide many advanced tools to help you generate sentences, identify overlapping intents, define thresholds that control the behavior of the NLU, and many others. And the complexity of the setup process grows with the size of your project and the size of your intent model. For example, if your chatbot needs to work with hundreds of intents and dozens of languages, setting it up can take considerable time. And this is where the text embedding three large model can make a real difference. It just allows you to achieve the desired level of intent recognition accuracy faster, make fewer iterations. It's just that the model is so good that it doesn't require much fine-tuning of various parameters of the Cognigy NLU. So to use it, uh, simply go to the project settings, navigate to NLU settings, and change the embedding model provider from Cognigy to text embedding three large, which you need to configure in LLM settings. Changing the embedding model invalidates the current intent model and requires retraining all flows. Once you do this, you will typically see higher quality scores for your intents and fewer overlaps with other intents. However, remember that this comes at the cost of latency and the expense of using external models. 
Now uh, that we've started talking about the quality of intents and quality of example sentences, let's take some time to discuss how you can evaluate NLU quality in an automated way. We noticed that many customers create their own internal tools and scripts to verify that the Cognigy NLU identifies the intents that it is expected to find. The exact process varies from company to company, but the pattern that we observed looks like this. You create a data set with user utterances and the corresponding intents that you expect to see. And you have a flow with a trained NLU model. Then to test it, you make the flow output NLU scores, deploy a REST endpoint pointing to that flow, and then write a script that processes your dataset and collects NLU results for each utterance and uh, compares them to the expected intents. Then you identify mismatches, sentences and intents that don't perform as expected, make changes to your intent model and repeat the process. This approach is valid, but there are two big problems with it. First, you have to modify the flow to provide uh, NLU scores to your testing script. And the second is you have to deploy a full featured endpoint, which is just not ideal. Because when you do this, when you use it, the system creates users, sessions, logs, and many other things that just are not needed for this task of getting NLU scores. And we simplify this process by introducing the new NLU scoring API, which has the sole function of returning NLU scores. It doesn't require any changes to your flows and doesn't create any unnecessary load on the platform. So if you're already using a similar process or only planning to automate your NLU tests but don't know where to start, this is your new starting point. Just specify the project ID, flow reference ID, and local reference ID. You can find this in the user interface and use them in your scripts to get NLU intent scores. Now it's just much easier and more straightforward than before. All machine learning models are probabilistic in nature, and intent recognition in the cognitive NLU is no exception. It returns up to five most probable intents, and this list is available to you via the NLU scoring API. And this brings me to my final topic, LLM-powered intent re-ranking. So, we have our top five intents. Sometimes the NLU can struggle to differentiate it between, uh, between closely related intents and the intent that you expect to see for a specific input sentence may not appear in this top position, but somewhere else within this top five. And as we discussed earlier, changing the intent model to improve intent recognition can be challenging. Uh, it requires extensive experimenting and testing, and this is where using large language models to reorder identified intents can be really beneficial. Let's see an example. Here, I have created five very similar intents with extremely low quality scores and significant overlaps. When I type in my input sentence, I want to fly to New York, the, the NLU identifies uh, book flight two as the correct intent. However, however, let's say that the correct intent should be book flight one. How can I achieve this? Uh, previously, uh, you would have to adjust the intent model and change example sentences to make it clear that 
I want to fly to New York belongs to book flight one, which is my expected intent. However, uh, in this situation, we have significant semantic overlaps among different intents, and changing example sentences for one intent can easily disrupt others. So instead of modifying example sentences and changing your entire intent model, uh, you can now provide additional descriptions for your intents. Uh, by going to this three-dot menu and clicking Edit, you can now add a description, and then inside the flow, you can make a request to a large language model and ask it to analyze the description, the descriptions of uh, these five intents, and identify the one most relevant to the user input. With this description, the LLM, LLM can reason out that the correct intent should be book flight one. And in this example, I asked the LLM to explain its reasoning, but normally, of course, you would only want it to return the intent name and probably use the JSON output format. So this is an artificial example, but it illustrates the principle really well. Previously, we lacked sufficient information within the flow to perform this re-ranking task. We only had intent names like book flight one, two, three, four, five, with no way to determine which one was the most relevant to the user input. And now with the Added descriptions, we can guide the LLM to identify the best fitting intent. And uh, you can find more detailed explanation and examples in our documentation. All right, uh, that's all I wanted to share today. We discussed Knowledge AI, where we removed limitations and introduced a new content parser, and Hybrid AI, where we enhanced the Cognigy NLU with LLM features, added native support for external embedded models, introduced the new NLU scoring API, and LLM intent re-ranking. That's it. Thank you very much. And new, it's back to you. Thank you, Alex. Wow, that was a bunch of fantastic features. To wrap up the Genai updates, I also want to highlight a few major enhancements we've made in LM orchestration and multimodal support. One of these is the ability to leverage any existing and future Genai models with Cognigy. When you navigate to the LM resource, you now see that we have a newly revamped LM creation panel. If you recall, previously we provided a predefined list of own supported models that you can scroll through and choose from. Now this has been replaced with a linear panel design where you can simply select from a drop-down list of the providers and models. If you notice, we have recently added native support for Google Gemini as well. But the key benefit of our new LM creation concept here is really the ability to connect with any model from our list of supported LM vendors using the custom model option. I can't emphasize the importance of this flexibility enough, especially given how fast new models are being released currently. You can technically hook your AI agent up to the newest Gen AI model on the market the moment it sees daylight. For example, you can see here that I have already set up the connection for GPT-40, the latest OpenAI's model that was released just a few weeks ago. Now for this demo, let's say I want to also connect to Gemini 1.5 Pro, the newest model in the Google Gemini family. All I have to do is specify the name, select the provider and choose the custom model option where I can then enter the model name or code that I want to use. You can find the model name on the respective uh, LM vendors website. Once this, this has been set up, I can just go ahead and configure the relevant Gemini connection. And for Google Gemini, you can use the same connection that you have for Google Vertex AI. Let's now head over to the flow editor and test it out. 
Here I have already created a simple flow using the um, prompt node and my AI agent is a travel advisor who can help me find my next vacation destination. Of course, I would choose the Gemini 1.5 Pro connection that I've just set up as the desired LM. And now I would go to the interaction panel and test it out. I would say, I want to experience floating markets and cruise the Mekong Delta. Where would you suggest I go? And seems like Vietnam would be my perfect destination. You can see it's that easy and instant to leverage any LM that you need with CardG. As the last update for today, I want to mention a new addition to the CardG marketplace. In addition to the list of extensions for third-party integrations, we have now added a new section for CardG X apps. Here, you can easily access code samples for multiple X apps use cases, like entering payment information, choosing a fly seat, sharing geolocation, collecting license plate number, submitting e-signature, and so on. These pre-made XR packages are meant to give you a head start when adding multimodal capabilities to your AI agent. For example, let's say I want to include a fly seat picker in my conversation flow. Instead of having to create from scratch, I can simply copy the code sample provided here and paste it into my XApp show HTML node. Of course, you can always adapt or change the code as you wish, but for today's demo, I will just use the code as it is. Now I'm heading over to web chat and see how it's going to look like. And as you can see here, it works out of the box without any modifications needed. In short, these XApp samples really help you fast track their design process and more easily create multimodal experiences with Cotton G. And that concludes today's tech update. I want to say a big thank you to our product managers for showing us the wonders of Cotton AI platform. If you want to stay in the loop of Cotton G's product releases, I encourage you to check out our product blog, where you can find the bi-weekly release highlights and multiple other useful resources. Just a few final notes before you leave. Kanshi is hiring, so if you know someone from your network who is looking for a new opportunity, don't forget to spread the word. You can find all open positions on our career page, and I can really testify to the amazing crew that we have here at Kanshi. Finally, as always, we love to hear from you, so please share your thoughts about the Tech Update series in the survey that launches right after the webinar ends. And that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next time.